Hello class, as promised today, we're gonna to talk about writing an argumentative essay. Um, more, more specifically, the steps for writing an argument. Now, um, I did mention this before, but I wanna remind you that this PowerPoint was designed to write an argumentative essay as in like a four to five paragraph essay. But what you're going to be writing is an extended research essay in which you make an argument and you present research to support your argument, right? Um, the research for your argumentative essay is going to be found by you using credible sources online, all right, or from books. So I just want to remind you, as you know, we mentioned where it talks about paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, etc. You're going to think in terms of sections. So section one, section two, section three, and so on and so forth. So what is an argumentative essay? An argumentative essay is a genre of writing that requires one to investigate a topic, collect, generate, and evaluate evidence, and establish a position on a topic in a concise manner. Just like a basketball player sets a pick for his, uh, for his other player, <laughs> his offensive person, you are going to take a stance. When you set a pick in basketball, you have to plant both feet and stand completely straight so that you're not called for a foul, right? In a research paper, you have to plant your feet on the argument that you're making and argue as if yours is correct. You are making this argument, this is what stands. Now with this comes other things such as counter arguments, which we'll, we'll discuss later on, but you need to be thorough. And you need to be strong in what you're saying. Don't don't guess like, well, I'm kind of saying this. No, take a stance, make a claim, run with it. The structure of an argumentative essay is held together by the thesis. Arguably, your thesis is your foundation. Thesis is a clear, concise, and defined thesis statement that occurs in the first paragraph of the essay. It's that one sentence that says exactly what you're going to argue. For example, my argument might be that Manor Hall is the best American school in a lane. If that's my thesis, then every single thing in the rest of my paper is going to connect back to that one sentence. If it doesn't, then your structure is weak. And you most likely have holes in your argument in that case. So remember, your thesis is one of the most important things. Now again, I mentioned before, we're not gonna think in terms of paragraphs, we're gonna think in terms of sections. So section one sets the context for the essay by reviewing the topic in a general way. Think of an introduction. This is, this is your introduction. In shorter papers, your introduction is about one paragraph, but in longer papers, it can be two paragraphs. Yours could very easily still be one paragraph, um, but for example, when I've written papers of, you know, 10 pages, 12 pages, etc., sometimes you need two paragraphs to fully explain what you're discussing, and that's fine. This section also explains why the topic is important, or the exigence, why readers care about the issue, or why should they care about the issue. If I'm arguing that Manor Hall is the best American school in a lane, then I need to explain why should people care? Why should people care about your topic? If you're arguing something about the driving age, um, the legal driving age, maybe you're suggesting, you're arguing that we should lower the legal driving age to 16, then I wanna explain like, why should you care about this? This is also where your thesis statement is presented. Your thesis statement typically comes near the last sentence, if not the last sentence of your first paragraph. Um, it can come in the beginning of that paragraph, but it is very common to see it towards the end. But anywhere in that first paragraph is acceptable. Now, in between every single paragraph, not just between your first paragraph and your second paragraph, but between every single paragraph, you must have a transition. Transitions are the mortar that holds the foundation of the essay together. 
Think about a, a wall made of block. In America, we build the foundation of our homes using block. In between each block is a layer of cement. The cement is what holds that together. We use that cement because even though if we just stack the blocks uh, on top of one another, they will probably hold position against at least some amount of force. Given enough force, they will fall. But if we use uh, cement or concrete to hold them together, then they're even sturdier and it takes even more force to tear them apart. The same with your essay. If you have transitions, it helps hold everything together. Instead of, instead of um, jumping from one thing to another and causing like a big wiggle in your wall or in your argument, um, we have a sturdy, straightforward concept. Without logical progression of thought, the reader is unable to follow the essay's argument and the structure will collapse. Now, I like to give this analogy, right? Think of when you go to the desert and you ride a four-wheeler or an ATV. We call them four-wheelers in America. Even a, a car with a manual gearbox, okay? If you're driving the car and you're going too fast when you go to shift, what happens? If you're driving too fast and you don't properly hit the clutch, or even if you do hit the clutch but you're going too fast, uh, and you try to shift, or you, let's say we try to shift um, from second gear to first gear, you get a jolt that throws you forward. That's not a nice feeling for anybody in that moving vehicle, is it? Instead, people that drive uh, manual cars need to, you, you hit the acceleration, when you want to shift, you let the acceleration go, you hit the clutch, you shift, and then you hit the accelerator again right? That provides a very easy, smooth transition from one gear to the next. And nobody, in theory, feels this because it's a nice, smooth transition. The same in your essay. If you have a transition in between each and every paragraph, your reader can very smoothly go from your one point to the second point. But if you don't have these transitions, then you're like jolting your reader from one place to the other. And sometimes your, your whole thought process gets lost because it's unclear how different items connect. Transitions should wrap up the idea from the previous section and introduce an idea that's to follow in the next section. So you're wrapping up one idea and you're easing them into another. Um, typically, people think of transitions as being one sentence. In fact, we use transition words to indicate that we're transitioning, right? And that's great for a topic sentence to use these transition words, but you also need to have some sort of baby transition at the end of the previous paragraph because it, you, one sentence doesn't always do that for us, it doesn't always get us that smooth transition we want or that smooth shift from one topic to another. So you wrap up the idea at the end of one paragraph and then you ease into the next. And this is something we'll work on as we, as we begin writing our papers. Now your body paragraphs. Notice it says body paragraphs. You can have three or four or five or even more body paragraphs depending on how many subtopics you have or subclaims. So you have your main thesis, which is what we mentioned, which is this, this giant green umbrella, right? In an argumentative essay, it'll be a giant green umbrella is your thesis. Each of these yellow umbrellas will be your subclaims. And then everything that follows under that yellow umbrella, so the evidence that you're giving, the warrants that you're giving, connect to your subclaim, which then connects to your thesis. Everything is intertwined. We practice this regularly with our analyze the text questions, and we do that deliberately. You must have a claim, evidence, and warrant in each and every single paragraph. Sometimes you'll have two pieces of evidence and two warrants in a paragraph with one subclaim, and that's fine. Sometimes maybe you need to break your subclaim up into two different paragraphs. 
That's also fine, especially for the paper that you're writing. Each paragraph should be limited to the discussion of one general idea, aka one subclaim. Don't talk about two main subclaims in a paragraph. By sticking with one discussion of a general idea per paragraph, you allow for clarity and direction throughout the essay. You're not, the like we talk about the darts analogy, you're not just throwing a handful of darts at a dartboard and hoping something sticks. No, you're throwing precisely one at a time and you're making sure it lands in the bullseye each time. Each body paragraph must have some logical connection to the thesis statement in the opening paragraph. If you find yourself writing about something in a body paragraph that doesn't connect to your thesis, or you have not made that connection clear, then you are not doing your paper effectively. You're not writing your paper effectively. That being said, it's really important to explain how and why the evidence supports the thesis aka your warrant. Your warrant is everything. Your warrant is everything or your warrants are everything. They're, they really are a fundamental aspect of this. We've talked in the past about warrants being important because they explain your thought process and that's important anytime but it's especially important when you're doing a research paper because maybe the reader will read the same sources that you chose and think of them differently than you did. So you have to justify your reasoning so that there's no room for doubt. Now, the last part of your paper is the conclusion. You must end your essay with a conclusion that does not simply restate the thesis, but readdresses it in light of the evidence provided. Don't introduce new information. We don't want new things thrown at us in the last paragraph because you didn't argue those things all throughout, so why would you put them then? Instead, you synthesize the information presented in the body of the essay. Think of it like a, um, a recap. You know how when you watch a TV show and then the next week the new episode comes on and it'll recap everything that was in the, first, the previous episode and then it starts the new episode? Your conclusion is the recap for your paper. Why do we put a recap with our paper? Well, you're reminding readers of the best part of, of like the highlights of your topic. You could also think of this as like um, when you watch a football match and then later on there are the highlights of the game, right? Um, you watch the highlights because you're reliving the best parts of the paper. The conclusion of your paper is the last part of the essay that your readers are going to digest. This is the, your last chance to impress them. So it's important that you synthesize or, or you refresh the reader of all the arguments that you made, why they should believe what you're saying. It's really easy to think of an argumentative essay in terms of a debate. Think like you're debating with a sibling or a classmate. When you're debating something, let's say with a sibling, and you go to your parents and you're like, I think I should um, have a curfew of 10 p.m. And your, your sibling goes, that's not fair. My curfew when I was their age was 9 p.m. They should have to come home at 9 p.m. You have to defend why you should be allowed to come home at 10 p.m. You cannot leave any stone unturned when making this debate. You have to make sure your argument's complete and logical. Don't leave any doubt as to your intent or as to what exactly you are, are uh, petitioning for or arguing. In the example of the curfew, you want to list all the reasons why, all the best reasons why you should be allowed to, to have a curfew at 10 o'clock as where your older sibling had a curfew at 9 o'clock at your age. Cover all your bases, everything. 
Leave no stone unturned. As you conduct your research, you will find some really good points for your argument. And you'll find some ones that are okay, but they're significantly weaker. That's fine. But when you're doing your research, you need to gather everything. It's when you write your paper and when you start to organize your paper that you make the decision you're choosing. I should use this over this because this is the stronger argument. That's when you choose the nitty gritty of I want the best. But in your research and, and in your full discussion, you want to be the most knowledgeable person in the room. Now, what you're going to do today is you're going to plan. Before you can start writing, you need to plan your essay and you consider how are you going to approach the research question. Well, you might be thinking, I don't have a research question. So we're going to establish one. Think about something that you are passionate about. For me, I'm passionate about um, government and people's right to vote. So I might do research to answer my research question of why vote? Why should people in the US vote? That's a question I wanna know the answer to, so I'm going to conduct research on it. In my argumentative essay or in my research paper, I'm going to argue that people should vote regardless of how, how much effect their vote actually have, or sorry, actually has, and then I'm going to defend this thing. So start by thinking, what is something you want to know the answer to? A debatable topic that, that may be something you already believe or something you're interested in, like um, should the legal driving age be lowered to 16? Should the legal driving age be raised to 21? Once you have a question in mind, then start conducting research around it and research both sides because when you write an essay, you have a counter argument or you need or you should address counter arguments like we've studied in this, this uh, unit. Spend the rest of today researching a topic. Research multiple topics. Find what, what is interesting to you. Make sure that you pick a topic or you settle on one or two topics that um, you are comfortable spending a significant amount of time working with. Choose something you're passionate about. You can ignore the second point, because as I said, this is designed for a different um, essay. But once you have chosen a topic, find possible sources. You don't have to set in stone any sources now. By the end of today, you only need to have two uh, possible topics. You'll finalize this topic in the next week, but for now, choose two topics that you think you'll be comfortable working with. That's all that I have for notes. Um, so go ahead and get started researching your topic and you must propose or you must post your two, um, excuse me, your two topics in Google Classroom by the end of class today. If you have any questions, please reach out to me via Google Classroom or email and I will see you guys in the next class. Have a great day.